Have you ever heard that giraffes can eat bones? It sounds like a wild rumor, but the truth is, these towering creatures are known to chow down on animal bones from time to time. Don't believe me? Let's take a closer look. In Tanzania's Tarangiri National Park, giraffes have been observed picking up and chewing on bones from animal carcasses. A few years back, a shocking incident was documented in Kenya's Asai National Reserve. Two adult giraffes were observed kneeling down and mouthing a wildebeest carcass, lifting it off the ground and then dropping it. Looks like he's smoking a joint. <laughs> This strange behavior might not seem unusual for giraffes who are known for their beauty and long necks, not their brutality. However, after a while, another giraffe was caught on camera waving the skull of an impala like a flag. These bones provide giraffes with important minerals such as calcium and phosphorus. But let's get back to the bones. What kind of bones are we talking about here? Giraffes have been known to snack on the bones of antelopes, buffaloes, and other large mammals. They don't exactly munch on them like a pack of wolves. Rather, they use their long, flexible tongues to strip off the nutritious bits and swallow them whole. In 2020, a giraffe underwent surgery to remove a cluster of bones that were causing significant damage to its tongue and cheeks, causing the animal great pain. Veterinarians feared that the wounds could become infected and lead to the giraffe's demise. However, the animal's rescued in the nick of time and survived the operation. But in all seriousness, the ability of giraffes to consume bones is a fascinating example of their adaptability and resourcefulness. It reminds us that nature is full of surprises and that there's always something new to explore. In another study, scientists analyzed 40 online videos showing great apes spinning on ropes. They found that this behavior was so frequent, it couldn't be considered random. The scientists compared this activity to children and adults who play on merry-go-rounds and found that gorillas, chimps, bonobos, and orangutans deliberately acted in a way that made them dizzy. They did an average of 1.5 spins per second, but the higher the spinning speed, the more the animals liked it. Hanging upside down or spinning in a circle upsets the balance of our physiological state and temporarily alters the state of mind. Primates can feel it too, apparently enjoying it. Although these mind-altering experiments can be deadly for primates, almost all species of monkeys fall out of trees at some point in their lives, usually during games or fights and the animals distracted. Unfortunately, this can lead to death if, for example, the height was too great or the fall was really bad. Smaller monkeys have been found to have a better chance of surviving such fall. These slow-moving mammals are known for their leisurely lifestyle and slow metabolism. However, sloths may mistake their own limbs for branches and fall to the ground. This behavior, known as suicide grip, can often lead to injuries or death. With their long claws and strong muscles, sloths have a powerful grip. Their bodies are so conditioned to hanging from branches that dead sloths have been found still suspended from the branch they were climbing on. During the early 1990s in Tanzania, lions faced a serious threat from swarms of blood-sucking flies, which were particularly widespread in the famous Ngorongor and Crater Wildlife Park. The flies were so numerous that they would almost devour the lions alive, causing them to suffer from trauma and pain. As a result, the lions were traumatized and stopped searching for food, instead trying to hide all the time by climbing trees and crouching in tall grass. The details of the fly attacks were gruesome, with the insects biting the lion's skin wounds. Ultimately, many lions died from the injuries caused by the flies. Flies were not present every day, but it is believed that the situation arose due to climate change, which started with a flooded the creator and surrounding areas, leading to massive increase in the number of flies. Unfortunately, the situation caused the death of most of the lions in the area. Current information about the situation, lions with flies, is scarce. If you have any information about it, please share in the comments below. Let me tell you about the lazy birds we call pigeons. All the birds work hard to create a cozy nest for their little ones. These birds just can't be bothered. Instead of putting in any effort, they'll just pile up some trash or toss a twig next to their eggs and call it a day. They even lay their eggs in the weirdest places, like in the middle of a busy parking lot. But before you judge these feathered freeloaders, you should just know that their behavior is actually rooted in evolution. Pigeons are naturally adapted to nest on rocky surfaces, so they don't need much of a foundation for their nest. In fact, the rock itself is their foundation. That's why they're so good at roosting on skyscrapers and balconies. Meanwhile, birds that nest in trees have to work hard to build strong nests that can hold their eggs and chicks. But pigeons? They just need a few twigs to keep their eggs from rolling away. And when their chicks hatch, they'll just sit still and wait for mom and dad to bring them food. So next time you see a pigeon nesting in a strange place, just remember, they're doing what comes naturally to them. And hey, at least they're adaptable enough to make it home in the big city.
At first glance, it might resemble a slimy worm, but in reality, it's not a worm, nor a snake, nor an eel. It's a cassilian, an amphibian that's similar to frogs and newts, except it lacks any legs. These mysterious amphibians spend most of their time underground, burrowing through the earth, forcefully ramming their hard skulls into the soil with the aid of their sturdy spines. The strangest part about the cassilian is in its worm-like appearance, or its digging techniques. It's their reproductive habits that will truly astound you. When female cassilians give birth, Earth, they grow an extra layer of skin that's packed with nutrients and fats, and their offspring feed on it with razor-sharp teeth till they're mature enough to hunt on their own. This process repeats until the young ones are big enough to fend for themselves. Now here's the kicker. The mother isn't devoured entirely by her ravenous offspring. The skin regenerates every three days, providing an endless supply of the youngsters the assassin bug family and exhibit a gruesome behavior of utilizing their carcasses of the vanquished foe as an out. To execute this, they first seize their prey using their lengthy mandibles and then inject them the paralyzing toxin that liquefies their insides. Following this, they suck the life out of their unfortunate victim and affix their exoskeleton to their backs using a sticky secretion, repeating the process till they have an alarming accumulation. Why do they engage in this bizarre behavior? The answer lies in the benefits it provides. Clad in the remains of their victims, the assassin bugs become well disguised and difficult to detect by predators. They remain still. Additionally, their outfit emits the same odor as their prey, allowing them to infiltrate ant colonies and other insect nests undetected. Once inside, they attack the inhabitants, adding them to their pile after draining their fluids. Hey there, buddy. You know how we love penguins? Well, they're pretty cute and all, but have you ever seen them poop? Trust me, it's not a pretty sight. When they gotta go, they really gotta go. It comes out of one hole, called a cloaca. And when they finally let it rip, it goes flying out at an amazing speed, almost five miles per hour. That's faster than some people run. And the distance? They just say more than four feet. But here's the thing. When they poop, they don't care who's around. So their penguins often get hit with these poop bombs. It's like a poop war out there. The next time you watch Pingu, remember what he's capable of. Listen up, folks. Don't let these cute little tortoises fool you. They get down and dirty, just like the rest of us wild animals. And when they do, things can get pretty rowdy. These guys make all sorts of weird noises, from little squeaks to giant thunderous bellows. <coughs> 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 They even make these noises when they mistake a tree stump for a lady tortoise. What's the point, you ask? Well, it's all about showing who's boss. So don't underestimate these little tortoise dudes. They may be slow and steady, but they sure know how to get loud and proud. So you know those cute little clownfish from Finding Nemo? Well, they may seem unremarkable, but they have some seriously interesting behavior. They live in small groups, the mature breeding male and female, and a few young males. The breeding female is in charge, but if she passes away, wild. The breeding male steps up and changes his sex to become the new leader, while one of the young males takes his old role. With this, all clownfish are born male, but they can switch to female if it's needed. So this keeps the peace in the group, since there's no competition for breeding. Well, that's a wrap on our video about the most stupid things animals do. If you enjoyed watching these lovable goofballs, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and share it with your fellow animal lovers. And who knows, maybe one day you'll catch your own pet doing something as equally ridiculous. Thank you for watching, and until next time, stay silly.